Chloe has the worst twist that I've ever seen in a horror movie. And it's even worse because there's actually not that many bad horror movie twists. Now there's a lot of bad endings, but other than Shyamalan or maybe a Stephen King movie, most people probably couldn't actually name a bad one. And I don't even think Shyamalan has bad twist endings because his movies are more about the characters and he focuses on the human experience and not so much about the calamity. Some people might say The Orphan or High Tension or maybe one of the ridiculous Saw sequels are bad, but The Boy is still the worst because it copies the details of a movie with a great twist and it basically turns it into a British Jason Voorhees movie. Killer doll movies have always been stupid, so it doesn't matter how serious they try and make the script, the idea that a three pound toy could actually kill a person is always going to be a little silly. Now dolls can be creepy in real life, but they have the same problem that Lovecraft stories have. The concept sounds good on paper because your imagination does most of the work, but when you see the same thing on screen, it usually doesn't have the same effect. Now The Boy is more of a haunted house mystery that uses the doll as a misdirection for something that's even dumber than a killer doll. And once I realized it wasn't a killer doll movie, I noticed it was almost identical to a movie called The Skeleton Key. Now both movies are about a woman that goes to an isolated house to take care of someone. In The Boy, she's a nanny that goes to an English mansion to babysit a doll. And in The Skeleton Key, she's a nurse that goes to a Louisiana plantation to take care of a man who had a stroke. They both have a friendly guy that comes around with exposition and backstory. In The Boy, he's a local delivery man, and in The Skeleton Key, he's an estate lawyer. They both have a list of rules that the old lady gives them. They have a female friend that they talk to every day. And the twist is basically the same too, because we find out that the person she's taking care of isn't who we think they are. From secret addicts with creepy photo albums to record players to unnecessary shower scenes, these movies are structurally the same. And they even start with the protagonist coming into the empty house, looking at a painting, and the first person she meets is the exposition guy. Whenever I notice similarities like this, I always wonder if the writers just copied the other story and tried to change some of the details so we wouldn't know, or if they honestly thought this was an original idea and the similarities are all just a coincidence. And every movie can be analyzed and broken down to all of its influences, but when the details are so specific like this, I start to wonder if maybe it's proof that there's only a limited amount of different stories we can tell. Even though these movies are structurally identical in almost every way, the major difference is when it comes to the ending. In my opinion, The Skeleton Key has the most fucked up twist ever, and the only other ones that I can think of that are really messed up are probably The Mist, The Orphanage, Saw, the Wicker Man in a 2007 movie called Catacombs. Now I know The Boy seems like an easy target to pick on and you would think that a movie would actually have to be good for the ending to be considered bad because you could find a thousand bad movies with bad endings but because the first two acts were so similar to The Skeleton Key, I feel like it's the worst because it had so much potential and failed. Now if I'm gonna talk about why the twist in The Boy was so bad, I have to talk about The Skeleton Key first. The skeleton key can be summarized in a few words. Mystery, voodoo, and the most fucked up twist you'll ever see in a movie. Now the skeleton key is about a nurse named Carolyn that agrees to help an old woman take care of her husband after he had a stroke. The old lady gives her a skeleton key that opens every door in the house. And eventually she starts snooping around and finds a bunch of voodoo stuff in the attic. Now she goes around town trying to learn more about what it all means and everyone that she talks to about it just tells her to leave it alone and don't get involved. Now the whole movie we keep seeing these flashbacks of this black couple and there's even a few pictures that we see of them and the old lady eventually explains that they were the old servants that used to live in the house. She tells the backstory about how they were doing some ritual in the attic with the two kids and when the family caught them they took them outside in the front yard and hung them. Now the twist is that the black couple used a voodoo ritual to swap bodies with the two kids and the old lady and her husband are actually the two little kids all grown up. But that's not even the worst part. The black guy was now in the lawyer's body, and the real lawyer was trapped inside of the old man now. And he never actually had a stroke. It was just the old lady using voodoo on him so he couldn't talk or move. And the reason Carolyn was hired is so the old lady could switch bodies with her so the black couple would be alive in two young bodies again. And they were able to trick Carolyn into thinking that she was protecting herself with a few spells, but she was actually helping them to complete the body swap ritual. So in the end, Carolyn and the real lawyer were trapped inside of these old people and the black couple were inside of their bodies. So let's talk about the boy and how it managed to copy a movie with one of the most amazing twists ever and turn it into basically Michael Myers in London. I always like this type of intro because it drops us right into the story and it doesn't waste the first 30 minutes trying to make the characters seem more interesting than they really are. 
The problem with this type of opening, however, is it can cause some pacing problems in the second act because it either has to be a exposition dump or a flashback scene or some random side mission to fill in the 15 to 20 minutes of development that would be normally put in at the beginning. But we do get this really out of place creeper scene where the driver tries to look down her shirt in the mirror. But I think it's even more ridiculous that he be trying to sneak a peek at some fucking bee cubs. What the fuck is that? <laughs> The fact that she fell asleep does tell us that this place is out in the middle of nowhere, so it gives us a sense of how isolated and alone she is. But even though this is a subtle way to tell us this, the filmmaker messes this up in the very next scene. The heel shy is out to step out for a moment. They beg your pardon, miss, and they ask that you wait in the parlor. What do you mean they had to step out? Where did they go? The whole point of this intro was to show that the house was out in the middle of nowhere. And considering that they have their groceries delivered and they have a personal driver, where could they be right now? She completely ignores what the driver just told her and she starts looking around in the upstairs rooms. And then we get this really random Zack Snyder slow-mo fake jump scare where the delivery guy just kind of pops up out of nowhere. They go to the kitchen and they kind of talk about nothing for a few minutes and the only useful information we get out of this scene is that Greta is from America and this is the first big problem in the story. California, right? Montana. If you didn't know, Lauren Cohen has a slight accent because she grew up in the UK and because this movie takes place in England, I don't know why they had to emphasize that she's American when they could have just had her use her normal voice. The old lady finally shows up from wherever the hell she's been this whole time and she takes her to meet the kid that she's going to be babysitting. And this is our son, Bronze. <laughs> really, nigga? Let's be honest. There's no way anyone would agree to do this shit. She flew all the way from Montana to England, and then she had to drive like three hours out into the middle of nowhere just to find out that she's staying alone in a big ass mansion for two months to babysit a fucking doll? Fuck no! Right away I would have said no to this shit, because right before this someone took her shoes and the mom said it was the doll. Um, I was sure I left my shoes right here. It's Brahms, he can be playful. Bitch, are you for real? This is the point where any logical person would have to ask, what's going on right now? I mean, the doll stole my shoes? Like, seriously? Like, come on, lady, what's really happening right now? Like, what are we doing? And this is even more confusing because the mom is being a real bitch the whole time. We find this out later, but both parents know it's just a doll. But they have this look on their face the whole time like, no, nah, dead ass for real. Like, no, nah, it's a real boy. And they act like she's crazy for not thinking it's real. They give her this list of things that she has to do every day, and she basically has to take care of the doll like it's a real kid. And she just goes along with it like there's nothing wrong with this scenario. A schedule, the rules. Now it may seem a bit silly, but it is important that you follow them because Brahms is not like other children. And this is just my suspicious mind, but they pay her in cash every week. So if they killed her or she came out missing or something, there wouldn't be a paper trail. An entire month? Pam, they gave you in cash? Yeah. Like she's just sitting there with a big ass stack of cash and if anyone ever came looking for her, they could just say, nah, she never showed up. But that's just kind of how my mind works. So this is probably the reason you don't see a whole lot of black people in horror movies. So the video kills niggas. Yeah. Then why the fuck would I? So after showing her the house and giving her all the rules, the old couple finally decides to leave so they can go on their vacation. And if this whole situation wasn't already creepy enough, they say probably the creepiest shit you could ever say on the way out and Greta doesn't even say anything. Be good to him and he'll be good to you. Be bad to him. Oh, she will. Be good to him, won't you, Miss Evans? What kind of shit is that? Now, I would have never even been in this situation in the first place. I would have already told the guy to drive me back to the airport, but just imagine you were at least willing to go along with this and then they say some shit like this on the way out. I'm so sorry. Hell no, no. You see that? That's a stupid bitch. The entire second act is just like the Woman in Black remake where she walks around the house with creepy scenes and fake jump scares every five minutes until you get kind of bored because there's no other characters and you know she's not going to die halfway through the movie. Now it does do a great job at making us think the doll is alive and that's mainly because of the cinematography. There's a lot of soft fades and close ups on the doll's face and even though it never actually moves or does anything, the framing and the use of dollies and zooms reminds me of the camera work from The Shining. Kubrick was able to make the hotel feel alive by just slow zooming down an empty hallway and holding a shot for 10 to 20 seconds and creating a sense of anticipation and tension just with the camera. But let's get into this legendarily stupid twist. So the abusive boyfriend from America just shows up out of nowhere. 
And this whole movie's been building up to this because every time she's on the phone with her sister, the sister tells her that the boyfriend keeps calling and she decided to just give him the real address because it was the only way to get him to stop. Please tell me Morgan didn't give him the address. He didn't know how else to get rid of him. He's and then this asshole is so obsessed with her that he gets a passport and then flies 13 hours from Montana to England, then drives three hours out into the English countryside to an isolated mansion. And even though he never even had a way to verify if this was even the right place, he just walks into the house and starts playing pool. He came all the way out here so he can take her back to Montana, even though he knew she was there babysitting a kid and couldn't just leave. All the way here, I was trying to figure out how I was going to convince you to come home and... And this is what I was talking about with the America thing. Why not just make her from England so when the asshole boyfriend shows up, it would make more sense because he'd only have to drive a few hours instead of flying halfway across the world just to be a dick. And I'm really tired of this abusive asshole boyfriend trope. Even though I might be kind of mad too because her sandwich game is trash. What the fuck is that? Her sandwich game is so terrible that Brahms had to make her one. When Sally Gasco and her mother brings guests over for a sandwich, they're expected to make it because the men are busy doing important things like critical thinking and having valuable opinions. But I really hate this trope because the guys are always like Super Saiyan level 10 assholes. And they just show up talking shit and being abusive like, yeah, hey, bitch, get back in the kitchen. Yes. Get back in the kitchen. And this happens in Sinister 2 as well. The husband is so comically abusive and I feel like it's just a cheap way to make somebody a bad guy. Like, there's no need to actually develop a character, just make him a wife beater or a rapist and it's like, you know, instant bad guy. The whole movie, Greta's been getting worn down to the idea that the doll's real and she actually starts treating it like a real kid. So the boyfriend has a pretty good idea. He thinks that if he just breaks the doll, it'll prove to her that it's not real. I threw it on the ground. I really miss my nigga. I really miss my nigga. What the hell was that? There's something. Oh, yeah. When I was first watching this, I was on the edge of my seat waiting to finally find out what the twist was going to be. But this shit legitimately made me angry. Because I noticed the skeleton key similarities pretty early on, I thought this was going to be a Pinocchio type situation where the family invited women out to the house and the doll would eventually steal their souls and gradually become a real boy. Kind of like the Hellraiser 2 mattress where every person that died made him a little bit more real each time. But the twist is that the real Brahms didn't die as a kid and he was just living in the walls the whole time like Sloth from the Goonies. And even though they never give us any reason why he can't talk or why he's wearing a mask, I guess he's just supposed to be evil with no explanation like Michael Myers or some shit. And who the fuck thought putting a cardigan on a bad guy was a good idea? I mean, he looks like what if Jason Voorhees dressed up like Kurt Cobain for Halloween. And then we find out he was jerking off with a sex doll all summer in the closet, and somehow he's supposed to be scary now. So you got this rich kid in a fucking sweater and slacks, creeping around a mansion and humping on a sex doll, while pretending to be a ceramic mannequin that a random American chick is taking care of, and this is supposed to be the guy we're afraid of? Fuck no! So the whole time the doll was being used as an avatar for the real grown man Brahms that lived in the walls. And all the chores and tasks that she did for him were just so he can live vicariously through the doll. But why? Why is he hiding in the walls when there's no one around to see him? He lives in an isolated mansion with rich parents, so why doesn't he just wear the mask and walk around the house like normal? This whole movie was trying to make us think that the doll was alive or possessed, but it never really does anything and the twist confirms that Brahms was just a normal doll. I don't know how the hell this movie ever got made because it's one of the few movies that structurally shouldn't even work. The plot collapses in on itself and the motivations and behaviors of the characters is so illogical and stupid that the story shouldn't even be able to function. So what do you think? Does the boy have the worst horror movie twist ever or is there one that's worse than this? As always, I would love to hear what you think so let me know in the comments.